Hello everyone, how are you? Today I'm going to repaint the dolls that I have customized already a year ago. And strangely enough, everything went wrong that time. It's difficult even to say why I decided to give this doll such a grey face, when she already had dark grey hair, and why I draw such dark circles under her eyes. Now she looks extremely tired and not very healthy, Probably the days were very grey and rainy when I was working on her. You know, typical Belgian weather has influence even on my dolls, it seems. But today we are going to solve it. And in the end of this video, she will look better. I hope at least. First of all, let's get rid of her old clothes and accessories and remove her hat. I warm it up with a hair dryer, the hat becomes soft and I can remove it easily. Then I take pure acetone and remove her old makeup. It's not that easy to remove all these layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant that I used to protect my artwork the previous time. The factory paint goes normally much easier off. When the paint is gone, I seal her face with three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant and start working on her skin tone. First of all, I want to make her face not that grey, but give it more a normal skin color. That's why I first apply three layers of light nude soft pastels on her face. When the grey color is completely gone and her face looks already more realistic, I take my watercolor pencils and sketch her eyes and eyebrows. I need to place them first before I start contouring her face. Her eyebrows I sketch like always with soft pastels and then use a piece of an eraser to shape them better. And then I start contouring her face. For me, this step is the most important in the whole repaint. The combination of shadows and highlights give the face extra dimension and makes it more alive and realistic. And first I use light brown pastels a little bit darker than her new skin tone. Then I take dark brown pastels and add it to the darkest place on her face. To the eye crease, to the sides of the nose, under the nose, under the lips, to the corners of her lips, under the cheekbones and to the hairline. Now her face looks a little bit too brown, and I will add a little bit of dusty pink pastels to make the skin tone softer, and then bright pink and red pastels to her cheeks as a blusher. Then I take my watercolor pencils and start working on her eyes. Right now I want just to draw the main colors and later, after applying the eyeshadows, I will add details and color accents.
Already on this step, I start adding tiny hairs to her eyebrows. And then, after every layer of sealant, I will add all the time more and more eyebrow hairs, combining all kinds of brown, gray, black, and even red pencils. With pinks of pastels, I add color to her lips. She has purple eyes, so for her eye makeup I will use a combination of pink and dark purple pastels. To her eye line, I add black pastels to imitate the shadow from the eyelashes. And now I can finally take my watercolor pencils and start adding details to her eyes and lips. Of course, it's very important to keep your pencils very sharp when you work on tiny doll faces. I always use a breaking knife to sharpen my pencils because normal sharpeners cannot give me such a long and pointy pencil tops. Every time when I start working, after every layer of sealant, I first take 3 minutes to sharpen all the pencils I'm planning to use. Now I still want to add some highlights to the middle of her face and to the most highlighted spots. For this I use a light pencil and then blend it very good with Q-tips or with a blending tool. Then I still add a touch of metallic bronze pastels to her face. It will make her skin glow. With a very sharp black pencil, I draw the bottom eyelashes. Now I'm taking white acrylic paint and add highlights to her eyes. Really, I keep my breath when I'm doing it. But anyway, even if you make a mistake, you can always remove it quickly with Q-tips.
Now her face is ready and I just need to remove the sealant stains from her hair. And I can start working on her body. Before blushing her body, I sand it good with a nail buffer, clean it with acetone-free nail polish remover, seal it with three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant, and then apply the same colors pastels like I use for her face. First a couple of layers of nude pastels, then shadows with brown pastels, then light pink and bright pink pastels, and in the end a touch of bronze pastels. For styling doll hair, I very often use such a very thin curler on low temperatures. Now I just need to attach false lashes, put some glossy varnish to her eyes and lips, and of course in the end I need to sign my work. It's Feels strange to write 2018. Especially for this doll, I've made a lace rope, a sleeping mask, and a flower chair. All these tutorials you will find in my next videos. Now it's time to see the end result. This is my old and new versions of the doll. And this is the original Rochelle Goyle doll next to my repaint. Which one of the three do you like most of all? I'm personally very happy with this repaint. To me she looks like a supermodel in the morning in her luxury hotel room surrounded by flowers and like other pretty things. So please don't forget to put your likes if this video was interesting and useful for you or if you just like the end result. And of course subscribe my channel if you don't want to miss my new doll crafts every Wednesday, Friday and Saturday. And see you ready tomorrow in my new video. Bye!